All right, all right. We're going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Most High God, Yahweh. We're going to do so in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai. It's your brother, Chief Priest, Allah's our lawyer, a.k.a. the Gorilla Hebrew. We are waiting on the arrival of Deacon Akai. He should be here on the live shortly. Um, we're going to go in through the Spirit and Power, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, with another situation room. We're going to be diving into biblical prophecy, end time prophecy. Um, tonight, most high will that deals with brick in the Bible. Okay. So for those of y'all that are not familiar with brick and what it is and what it's about, brick is the, uh, a new, what they also call the new development bank. It's an emerging, uh, uh, coalition of countries that are trying to build an economy to rival the IMF, the international monetary fund and the world bank that exists. The Rothschild banks, the, the banks that pretty much run the world, these are the new emerging economic powers that are planning to basically dethrone the economic powers that be currently, which is known as the EU and NATO or the beast that, of course, run by the 13 elite families um, that pretty much control the world. All right. And it's going to lead into this economic struggle and, of course, lead into a world's war, the third world's war. OK, so this is something that has been. You know, that been written on the wall for a while, as early as uh, 2001, when this uh, term was coined BRIC, which stands for Brazil, Russia, India, and China. And it's something they've been building for a while uh, with Russia uh, getting rid of their World Bank and developing their own bank, um, as well as these other countries. So uh, we're going to go into it and show you guys this very same coalition in the Bible and how it plays into biblical prophecy, uh, end time destruction, apocalyptic events, and our salvation. Um, Deacon, I believe you're on now. Deacon, you there? You just came in a damn thing. Oh, well, yeah, he should be. It looks like he's gone, but I don't know. So he'll be joining us shortly, but yeah, so. Again, through the spirit of power, Yahweh, by Shemel, Shah, we're going to be going into the brick. Okay, again, that's Brazil, Russia, India, and China. You know, since their development, or they're also known as the Big Four. Um, since their development, there's been um, another other countries that have cleaved unto them. Mike, check. You good? You loud and clear? Okay. Yeah, but since their since their development, other countries have joined with them: South Africa, Somalia. Um, and uh, uh, North Korea, Iran, of course, and various others. So they're trying to essentially um, combat the the world powers as we know it today, which make up the beast, the, the EU and NATO, which is the European Union and North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So um, they're trying to combat the beast on the economic level. We, of course, know that that economic, that dollar will always lead into a war. So, um, you know, and it's all the most I told us about all of this in the Bible. So all praise to him for it. Come, come, brother. He pretty much brother pretty much summed it up. I mean, uh, it's all part of prophecy, and we've been trying to trying to go into more prophecy and uh get ready, man. The scriptures say wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of the times. So you gotta know. The last thing the Messiah said when he left, he said, you know, watch, watch, because I come quickly. So um, let me pull up a couple of scriptures and then let's get this thing, get this thing started. Plug in that uh, Super Bowl event. Caught the water of this weekend. Uh, most I will be going to be in Atlanta again uh, for the Super Bowl weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So come see us in Atlanta, Georgia. If you'll be in the area, for Super Bowl 53, um, we'll be there condemning the damn Super Bowl, condemning the NFL, uh, you know, all those various things through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah this weekend in Atlanta, GA. So you can catch us there. Most I will. And if you missed on the summit, we got some powerful footage. That's right. For this summit. Like, share, and subscribe. Super chat. That's right. Support the beloved brothers. 
Yeah, man. If y'all miss the summit, man, I feel like I've been telling brothers earlier, I feel bad for you. But like the brother said, we got some very powerful footage coming. So look for it. We got a couple things scheduled, something scheduled for tomorrow and uh, Saturday right here on the main page, the Sakari channel, as well as things that will be scheduled out throughout next week. So y'all look for that through the spirit. Man. It's going to be powerful. I want to make sure y'all see this footage and, and get the edification and be able to partake and, and take a look at um you know the, the glorious nationhood that we partook in um during that uh joyous and blessed event um some of y'all already seen it sakari water we've already put out the opening ceremony meet and greet footage um which was powerful we did great numbers um i see israel is excited to see they weren't able to participate and see it i'm excited to see you know uh what went on so it was very very powerful man we had some great food that i wish i could have had some great coconut curry some great lamb our brother from the tribe of Ash will prepare. So, um, man, it was powerful. But uh, yeah, just look for more footage, footage from um, uh, more footage from the Unity camps on Friday, um, from the summit itself, from the Sabbath service, as well as from the camps that we had after the summit um, on Saturday. <clears throat> you know, so look for all of that through the spirit, man. Um, a lot of powerful things going on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um Let's get into it. I'm gonna share the screen. <clears throat> Let me share the screen, right? Okay. All right. Okay, I got everything pulled up. So yeah, all praise on <clears throat> all praise on the glory of Yahweh Shimei Al Shai. Uh, let's get into it here. Let me share my screen and let's show our beloved brothers and sisters through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shimei Mashiach Yahweh Shai, the brick in the Bible. All everything major, everything major that's supposed to happen, that's happening, that happened, that's going to happen, is in the Bible. This is how we know this is a. Uh, a, a book, a composition of collective records that the Most High Himself is dealing with and behind, <clears throat> because we see prophecies coming forth um, from from letters and writings that were written thousands of years ago, and this is why this book is set apart from the rest of the the so-called religious books on the earth, right? So, first and foremost, let's give you guys an update on the brick, the brother. Um, he spoke briefly on what the brick is. Now, what I'm going to do is play a quick video. This is Bricks 2018. This is their 10th summit. They're going strong, y'all. They're going strong. The hey, they're trying to catch up to us, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're trying to catch up to us at the 12th summit, but this is the 10th summit. This is from uh, six months ago. So what we got to understand is this. First and foremost, let me let me pull this up because I know I'm going to need this. <clears throat> I know I'm going to need this. All oh, praise, honor, and glory. Okay, boom. We're going to go here, then we're going to go back here. So what people, what we have to understand is this. The Most High is raising up a coalition of countries to fight against the European countries, which is EU and NATO, spearheaded by America. And so we know that the US, the, the, the online media, the, the news media, um, the social media, we know that we can't get a lot of information or intel of what's going on in these other countries because there's a blackout in some of these countries you can't like you got to go on the damn dark web really to 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 know exactly what's going on like what was happening in st louis when there was the riots in st louis when they killed michael brown we couldn't find none of that on uh on the internet so brothers had to send videos personally or send them through facebook messenger so when you look up the brick, like the brick news, it's hard pressed to really find out 
what their moves are because not only are they going to let the nato and america know but america is not going to let us know that these guys are dropping a dollar that they're getting their own currency that they're trying that they're um they're 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 ceasing trade with america in some of the nato countries so america's not going to let us know that being here and under this government where we're subject to whatever they're feeding us in the media right so this is from six months ago as you see why when you when you when you hear what's happening and when you see some of the stuff that they're they're going to do this should be on every news outlet but why isn't it because they know that these are their counterparts these are their arch nemesis these are the people who there's going to be a battle for world government uh, world governance rather right so let's listen to some of this and I, I want you guys to take a look you can tell by the banner watch this leaders of BRICS emerging economy so so the tenth summit right it was in july i believe and um it was in johannesburg which is south africa so when you see the s at the end of BRICS, usually and normally it's a little s because south africa doesn't really have much to do or the influence military force economic force as brazil russia india and china just to uh bring out that understanding Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa in Johannesburg for the 10th edition of BRICS Summit. The summit that started on 25th July will continue till 27th July. This year's theme for the summit is BRICS in Africa, collaboration for inclusive growth and shared prosperity in the fourth industrial revolution. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is... Rep so look at this, look at this, right? Issues global governance this is big when you got these nations who are stopping trade with the u.s dollar um who are building their own economy and currency and they come together to have a a, a, a summit about global governance what does that mean they don't want america to be the superpower they don't want america to be the world dominator these countries are trying to have a coalition to have their global governance and dominance over America, NATO, EU, and so on. So this is big, right? This isn't just some small thing. Then they got vaccines. And this is only, like I said, this is only what they're telling us. Lord knows they're coming together and talking about which missiles are we about to shoot and launch on America? How can we stop trading with America so we can damage and cripple their economy, right? So they got vaccines on there. And um, as you know, the Eastern, the Eastern world, they're not, they're not really with the vaccines, right? They're not with the vaccines. And then it has the empowerment of women. Um, but that's just some of the topics. But the main point that I wanted to hone in on is the global governance part. Because NATO and EU ain't at this summit. That shows you that they don't want a merging or, or, or um, United Nation type of global governance. This is only Brazil, Russia, India, China. Now it's not limited to that, as you got South Africa as the Little West, as you see in Ezekiel 38, that Russia was going to be a guard and a protector to matter of fact i'll get just it. get that I, I have a side get it because you come have come. to watch there are certain countries that are named on here that are also a part of this okay um kush's name right so we know kush today is broken up into ethiopia somalia eritrea and djibouti so that's four countries so you also have somalia as a close working closely with russia you have various countries so go ahead and uh read that officer come this is ezekiel chapter 38 verse one and the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I, 
and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. So like you read that part of your muffle. I'm gonna try to pull this article. Read that. Uh, I'm gonna verse, read verse two. It says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the lands of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach. Right. So the Gog, the land of Magog. And I'm gonna show hip you out of something. Because when you deal with the land of Gog, the land of Gog and Magog really encompasses all of Eastern Europe and Eurasia. Okay, get this straight, Eurasia. So Eurasia would include parts of Mongolia and China. All right, that's the land of Gog and Magog. So mm. the people who currently inhabit that land is who this is talking about, which is why China is a key player in it, right? So read. It says, Salakim, like uh, verse 3, And say, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, uh -huh. the chief prince of Meshach. So God, you got to understand something. God is against Russia and all of these, all their allies. He's against them, but he's going to use them for a specific purpose, right? Read. Con. It says, and I will turn thee back uh -huh. and put hooks into thy jaws. God putting hooks in their jaws and bringing them back into that mind that they had before the Soviet Union fell, which was they were going to be the dominant power in the earth. And, the, and they failed through the Cold War. They failed with the Soviet Union. So as they fail, what happens when you take a loss? You fall back, you regroup, you come up with a new plan to get to where you need to be. And the new plan that they came up with is called brick or now bricks. That's the new plan to get them world dominance. They understand they can't just do it alone with their European comrades. They got to go and get with people out in other parts of the world. So now they're linking with China. They're linking with East India. They're they're linking with uh, 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 South Africa, with Iran, with North Korea, etc. Khan, Khan. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot, man. My son is crazy, man. Nah, you get it. When you have, when you have to when you have to use the, when you have to use the rod, I'm just gonna start speaking for you. <laughs> Got the water, the water. <laughs> go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Finish God. reading that. It says, and I'll put and I'll turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, uh -huh. and I'll bring thee forth mm -hmm. and all thine army. That's right. Horse and horsemen, uh -huh. all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. That's right, read on. Even a great so that all sorts of armor. I don't know if y'all saw last year these extra out suits that they got. I'm talking about the Russian army is coming on an unprecedented level with the military armor and equipment that they're having. Huh. That's why it's speaking about it in this way, read. Kind of the war games. They're having the uh the joint war games, Russia and China. Exactly. So this brick, they deal with the the economic aspect. But really, they want to get down to the nitty gritty, which is to the, the war, the fight. Right, Reed? Con. Even a great company uh -huh. with bucklers and shields, Reed? all of them handling swords. Uh -huh. Persia. Persia. See that? This Iran. Read. Ethiopia. Ethiopia, right? That, again, that's Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, Djibouti. And like I said, Russia and, and uh, Somalia especially are strengthening ties. Right, Reed? Con. It says Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Uh-huh. Gomer and all his bands, uh -huh. the house of Togomar. So Gomer and Togomar are dealing with the uh, rest of Eastern Europe, right, Reed? Uh, of the North Quarters uh -huh. and all his bands That's right. and many people with thee. That's right. So it's all these countries that are in bed with Russia, right? Go ahead. Um, That's it on that. No, there's the, there's the point. There's more, it's more, there's, there's more. More countries? There's, okay. Yeah, well, not more countries, but there's there's a point that's going to be proven. Uh -huh. It says, be thou prepared uh -huh. and prepare and prepare for thyself, uh -huh. thou and all thy company. See that? That's the war games that Officer Assad was just talking about. Be thou prepared and prepare thyself. Mm. But are constantly having war games. Come. Right? Read. And all thy company uh -huh. that are assembled unto thee, and this is the point right here, and be thou a guard unto them. So they're guarding the smaller countries, i.e. a South Africa, right? Don't you think it's cool? They be, all these crackers are being displaced from their homes in South Africa, and, and you don't see a Western European power in America going in there and try to save these white people in there. Mm. You ever think about why that might be? Because they have a guard, all right? And quite frankly, those white people, a lot of them white people that are in South Africa are not people that Russia is truly interested in dealing with, and the reason why is because they're Western. They're Germans and they're English. Right, so they're not fond of them because they're from the West. They're a part of the beast. That's who Russia is opposing. So they're actually more likely to jump in bed with those Hamites, go uh, jump in bed with those Moabites, with those uh, Elamites in Persia, you know, with the uh, Elamites in India as well. You see what I'm saying? That's who they're more prone to deal with, right? But go ahead, D. Con, and we've seen a while back. Uh, we've seen that 
Russia was really pressing America when they was putting sanctions on Iran. So that's a part, that's also a part of a being a guard unto them, right? So let's listen to this a little bit more and then um, we'll proceed and show you guys the prophecy where Zechariah prophesies about the brick versus NATO. And just like we brought out in Ezekiel 38, it's not just for countries it's more but there's key players to these countries just like there's key players to the nato uh uh, uh excuse my language i was about to, but germany greeks uh, uh uh italy turkey some of these countries in nato going bankrupt coming out of bankruptcy don't really have military force so that's the part iron part clay the same with the brick a lot of their allies may not be on the level as Brazil, Russia, India, and China, but it's a key match. As you can see in my right-hand screen, right, that I'm putting my arrow on, it says Brick versus NATO. These people know 1.5 million views. These people know this is biblical prophecy. They know it, but they don't know where to go to find it because the Lord only shows his word unto Jacob. They're the most high hand, man. He's just so powerful. All right, so let's listen to this a little more. Presenting India at the summit. The 10th BRIC summit has many items on its agenda. Terrorism is one of them. India's biggest achievement... Okay, terrorism is one of them. And who's the main terrorist on the planet? Damn America, like the brother Alizar was just saying. You know, America's 200, over 200 garrisons across the, uh, the, you know, the world. Um, they're trying to button everybody's fight. Uh, trying to bully, bull, well, no, uh, Russia is the bully who's going to bully the bully, all right? 2017 BRICS summit was to name Pakistan-based terror groups lashkar e taiba and jaish e Mohammed for it's terrorism fine. in its declaration. Real quick, just real quick, I, I want to read y'all some headlines, just briefly. Um, China builds their first base in Djibouti, which is which is Ethiopia, uh, the land of Kush. We also have Somalia bans a UN envoy. You see that? So they're already making these moves in the, in these key locations that we see referenced that Russia was going to be a guard to. We see these moves being made strategically. We see people, that line being drawn in the sand and people getting on their respective sides of it. You understand what I'm saying? As this third world war gets ready to ramp up. In these countries that you look at and you think it's not a big deal, Djibouti, Somalia, what's the big deal about all these? But we see they're mentioned here in the Bible, these lands, and we see the people that they're mentioned with. It's happening exactly like it says in the Bible, man. So it's just powerful. I just want to read a couple of those headlines briefly, but you can go ahead. Con, con. So let me play a little more. However, later... Matter of fact, uh, let's, let's, let's go into it. Let's go into it. It's been long enough. We're going to go into it. We're going to start at 13. You you still want to start at 13 or you yeah, want to get the con? Yeah, we can start at 13. Okay, go ahead. You can do the 13 to um to 16 and I could I could do the rest so we could we can just go back and forth however you want to do it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh so was Zechariah 1 to 13 and Yahweh answered the angel. It's a lot. He was still we probably go before that. What you think? Uh, nah, 13 is fine. 13 is fine. All right. All right. All right. Uh, and Yahweh answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So here we see the angel that's coming to the prophet, right? The prophet Zechariah. And now the Most High is coming to the prophet through the angel with comfortable words, right? To comfort, right? Verse 14. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, I am jealous. For Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. And I am very so displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped further forward, rather, the affliction. See that? So Yahweh is mad at these heathen nations, right? So this is part of the, the uh comforting words that the most high is given. Yes, he's destroyed us. Yes, we've been given all the curses of Deuteronomy 28 as a result of rebelling against the most high and leaving his law, statute, commandments. But yet he's still coming to us and coming to this prophet with through this angel with comforting words that's going to make us comforted, right? What are these comforting words coming about? Uh, talking about verse sixteen. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. The comfort is that he's coming back to us with mercy. He's going to be merciful unto Israel. My house shall be built in it, saith Yahweh of hosts, and then line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. So this is something that uh, partially happened. 
um, going back to the time of when we came out of Babylon, right? We were delivered out of that captivity. We were able to build the house of the Most High God. But it has an even ultimate foreshadowing that will give us our ultimate comfort. And that begins to be elaborated upon in verse 17 and the battle that's going to have to take place in order for us to get that liberation. So go ahead, pick it up there in 17. Con, con. <clears throat> so we see when we got to uh, when we went from Babylon to back to the land as Cyrus liberated us from the Babylonians, but still had us in captivity. He did let us uh, 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 build build the house, build the temple, right? So, like the brother said, that's partially because this third time, the temple is going to be built again, which proves that you know the the context has changed into an end time connotation, and that's the thing with the contemporary prophets of the time of Babylon, right? The second temple prophets, as they call it, they were prophesying against ancient Babylon and modern day Babylon in the same chapter. We see that all through Isaiah. We see that all through Jeremiah. They will give prophecies directly dealing with ancient Babylon and the captivity that, that they were in. And they were also giving future prophecies to the modern day Babylon in which John the Revelator substantiated Mystery Babylon, which is America and the land of the north, as they also call it as well. So let's go to verse 17, right? I want to read verse 16 again. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Meaning the temple structures are going to be measured. This is that line that is talking about. When you look this word up in the Hebrew, it's dealing with measurements. Matter of fact, we got a little time here. Let's get all the meat. Right, all to me. So it says cord line, measuring line. What's this dealing with? This is dealing with um, the, as you can see, even in Kings and Chronicles, the measurements of the temple. Right. So um, it says, verse seventeen, cry yet, saying, me again, also, also proclaim, thus saith the Lord of hosts. My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. This didn't happen when we got back to the land after the Babylonian period. We still were in captivity. The cities didn't prosper and get spread abroad and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. That didn't happen. Scripture say we were still in fear. We were still in captivity. Ezra says, Ezra 9 and 9, I believe. And Nehemiah 5 and 18 says we were in great bondage. These are the primary sources that were in the Persian era or the Persian time frame, the Persian Empire, the Persian captivity. So this is not this wasn't fulfilled back then and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Verse 18, key point. Then I lifted, excuse me, then lifted up mine eyes and saw and behold, four horns. Now, brothers will say, well, who are these four horns? Well, if anybody is familiar with this breakdown that we gave uh, a, a few years ago through the Spirit and Power Yahweh by Shemiel Shai, these are the four key players of NATO. Well, how do we know this? It says it. 1 and 19, remember, this is end time connotation. Verse 19, and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? What are these four horns? And he answered me, these are the horns which scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. So these four horns will be the horns that scattered both kingdoms in the end times, according to the context. See, we can't have a narcissistic hermeneutic. We got to deal with the context. A lot of brothers say precept upon precept. Well, we got a new phrase. It's precept upon precept within context. So... These four horns are the same horns mentioned in Daniel 7, right? And again, like we said, these are the four key players of NATO, and we're going to prove that. Um, I also got to get the European slave competition. I got to get that. European competition, yeah. Okay, so Daniel 7 in verse 7, it says, And after this I saw the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, right? We all know that the fourth beast was the Roman Empire. Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, 
and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. This was the 10 horns of the Roman Empire. It was comprised of the Eastern Roman Empire and the Western Roman Empire. That's 10 kingdoms. And that's what made it the Roman Empire. It says, I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Right. So. This little horn is America. America came from one of the 10 horns. Anybody who's familiar with uh, uh, history, geography, then you know that Great Britain or the, or the Britons, that goes all the way back to the Roman Empire. So out of that horn, out of the Britain horn, was birthed uh, the Americas, right? Which a lot of people believe and can also prove that um, America is still owned by Britain today which is why the scriptures say, you know, there's controversy over the scripture, but I like to use it anyway. The scriptures say your mother shall be sore confounded, right? Okay, so um, Amer Britain is the mother of America. So out of, the, out of one of the 10 horns, the Britain horn came up America, right? The little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. So how did America come great? Uh, it took down the Spain, the Spanish horn, the French horn, and the Britain horn, right? So not only did it come from the horn, it had to take down that horn, which is why you got the 1776, the Revolutionary War, the Spanish War, the French America War, and that's how America became the sole power, right? And then uh, France, Spain, those are not new countries. They, they're a part of these 10 horns that were a part of the Roman Empire. So they went down, but they stayed, they went down, they got taken out of power, but they stayed their, their country, they stayed, uh, 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 with their own lands over there, but they came back up through the revised Roman Empire, right? So these are the four horns. And when you look at the, um, let me finish this. I considered the horns and behold, there came up another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men. So with the American horn, it had eyes like the eyes of men. These eyes, when you deal with um, the government branches of, of America with the judicial system, it's the House and the Senate. When you look, it's an eagle, right? I mean, let me let me let me see if I can pull it uh, real quick. It's been a while since since I pulled this up, but Lord willing, we can get it right. Let's see. Um, let's see if this will put eagle the judicial system. Or eagle government if you want to interject at any time go ahead brother eagle government system of America <coughs> where is that let me see let me see Here we go. Let's see if this will pull up. Man, it was a it was a real deal. It was explaining everything. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so anyway, when you look at the American legislation system, the two eyes that Daniel was talking about is the House and the Senate. And it makes perfect sense. Why? Because if they do not see eye to eye, then they cannot pass laws. This is facts. Right. So um, and it says and a mouth speaking great things, you know, that they're the greatest country. And like like high priest Ariel used to say, we're going to go to the moon. We're going to be the greatest country. We're going to have all these countries in suggestion. We're going to force our democracy on it. We're going to make homosexual legal it's homosexuality legal. We're going to make pedophilia legal. It's, we're going we're gonna to do all this great stuff. Right. That they consider great stuff, but it's really immoral. So. These are the four horns, right? These are the four horns that Zachariah is talking about. Now, yeah, I, I got it. I got it. What you want to type in is um, <clears throat> what you want to type in is executive, legislative, and there we go. Eagle. That's what you want to type in the three headed executive. Eagle. What executive, legislative, and judicial eagle? Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. 
I knew I wasn't tripping. It's been a while, man. We got to go over these prophecies again, brother. Right. Okay. Now let's get the images. Okay. Oh, wait. There we go. There we go. Boom. So let me get, can I get it bigger than this? Um, let me see. Okay. Well, any, any of you guys can look this up, right? So as you see, the two eyes on the eagle, it represent the house and the senate. So those are the two eyes on this little horn. If they can't see eye to eye, then they cannot pass the laws for the government, right? So you brothers should look that up and go into that because that's a part of prophecy as well. John the Revelator seen the same thing, except for he's seen a lamb with two horns. Those two horns on the lamb represent the house and the senate. A lot of people say Democratic and Republic, but it's not. It's the house and the senate. Oh, that's and the right. Dem Democratic and Republics, they could go in those particular uh, uh uh legislative branches right kind of the water so um uh now i need to look into the the, the european slave competition real quick euro in slave competition hey remember they tried to remember it was hard for us to find this information they was watching our videos seeing yeah it was easy it at out. first they try to cover they try to slick cover it up right right okay so that uh that, no it was this is good but that wiki article it sums it up real good Hold on. i think this is it right here yeah if you find it let me know but i think this this could be it right here okay yeah, that, here we go i got it i got it i got it right here so um and this is from the source uh herbert s klein herbert s and jacob klein the atlantic the atlantic the atlantic slave trade Cambridge University Press, right? 1999, page 103 to 139. That's the source. It says the major Atlantic slave trading nations ordered by trade volume, meaning what? Who had the most slaves, right? Were the Portuguese, British, French, Spanish, and the Dutch empires, okay? So, it says several had established outposts on the African coast where they purchased slaves from the local African leaders. These slaves managed by a these slaves were managed by a factor who was established on or near the coast to expedite the shipping of the slaves to the new world. Right. So uh, what else was I looking for? OK, so we see we got ports, the Portuguese and we got the Spanish. These are one entity, even though they were functioning as two. Everybody should know that. Yeah, that's on one. Same, they're on the same landmass in Europe, not because they're where they're at is actually disconnected from a lot of the rest of Europe, Spain and Portugal, and they're really the same people that just divided themselves. Just like you have Anna, um, not Anatola, Cat the Catalan, Catalina, or whatever it's called in North. Well, just like Eritrea and Ethiopia. Exactly. They're trying to separate themselves now, but in truth, they're literally the same people. The same way the German and the Dutch, the Deutsch and the Dutch, they're the same people, but then they begin to separate themselves. You see what I'm saying? They all come from the same group of people. So that's how we know who's who, right? But go ahead. Kind. Of. So, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, so we got the Portuguese and the Spanish. That's one horn. We got the Britain. That's two horn. French, three horn. Dutch empires, they fell off rather quickly. So what do we have up here? Kind of. The English colonies, the early Americas. So that would be the fourth horn as prophesied by Daniel 7. That's right. But Zechariah is saying that these four horns would be the ones that scattered us. And coincidentally, these four horns here are the ones who ruled the European slave competition. Coincidentally? Or prophecy. I say prophecy. That's right. Right? So we go back to Zechariah 1. And we're saying all that to say, because before we even... um. Uh, 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 okay, we did read verse 19 because these four horns would be the ones to scatter Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. What does that mean? North and southern kingdom. So we see Israel here. Yeah, who, there's the distinction. Salaki, go ahead. Who put the Taino Indian who should try to eat from on a boat and send them to Spain? You see, Spain did that, right? So all the tribes were scattered. A lot of people like to negate this fact. You have this Negro only rhetoric that says, well, when were 
of the Latinos and Indians in slavery, where they were put in slavery. They were put on, on fields and had to work for free. They were put on boats and shipped to different parts of the world. This is Con. fact. Con. Right? And it's prophecy mm -hmm. right here that that would happen to them, man. Mm -hmm. It's like it happened to us of Judah, of the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Con. And so as we substantiated, this is an end time prophecy. As we substantiated, these four horns would be the ones that scattered uh, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. As we went to the source that showed you that these same four horns in Daniel 7 were the same four horns in the, who ran the European slave competition, substantiating what Zechariah is prophesying about in 1 and 1. Just so you guys don't get lost. Stay with us here, right? Here's where it gets better. Zechariah 1 and 20. Here's where the brick comes in at, right? And the Lord showed me four carpenters, okay? Now... When we look at carpenter in the Hebrew, it's the word karaj, right? Excuse me. So what do we get when we look up this Hebrew word? We get craftsman, artisan, engraver, graver, artificer, skillful to destroy warriors, right? So we see it's not just talking about four people coming to build a damn go-kart so you can ride around and have fun. This is talking about some people who are coming for it, because if it's four horns and it's four carpenters, and if the carpenters are four countries, then this these these carpenters have to be four countries. That's right. Right? You about to say four, something? It's a big four on four. Like it says, craftsman, artisan. They're basically like somebody who's like a skilled artist, but it says also skillful to destroy. And that, that's what the white man is good at, you know. Um, Russia, be it Russia, America, or any of their counterparts, they are skillful in destruction. It's it's what they do, it's their blessing. They shall live by the sword. So that's what it's referencing. Con, con. And um, matter of fact, let's get that, right? Keep in mind, four carpenters, right? Keep in mind that number, four carpenters, okay? So let's get this. Where is it at? Where, okay, here we go. This is the article on Brick on Wikipedia, but the source is from Pro Procurat Sergia, Sergius uh, Fab... Fab <laughs> Fabisiak. Whatever right? that devil's name is. <laughs> Whatever this devil's name is, right? This is some type of Russian language, okay? So uh, I can't even begin to, to tell you what source is from, but this is the source, okay? From August 2016. Now, what it says is in economics, BRIC is a grouping acronym that refers to the countries Brazil, Russia, India, and China which are all deemed to be at similar stage of newly advanced economic development. It is typically rendered as the BRICS, with a little S, like we said before, or the BRIC countries, or the BRIC economics, or alternatively, alternatively as the big four. This is the big four. The BRIC is the four carpenters, through the spirit of power, Yahweh Bashim Shai. So when we put all this together, and we see the undenying evidence with all the sources and all the precepts, we can see that this big four is the same big four that Zechariah 1 is speaking about, right? So let's further go into it. When we look at this word for carpenter in the Hebrew, it's karaj. How do we know this is brick? Let's substantiate it in the Hebrew. We got Isaiah 54 and 16, right? Isaiah 54 and 16. Anybody who studies uh, One West theology, right we ain't saying it's perfect but damn it most of it is on point all right i'm saying it so we look at isaiah chapter 54 and it says where do i want to start at <clears throat> okay 16 is really the point okay come so let's go to verse 16 it says behold i have created the smith right what is this word for smith right here it's the same word for carpenter in Zechariah 1, the Hebrew word karash. Karash, warrior, skillful to destroy, right? So the Most High is saying he created these carpenters that blow up the coals in the fire, that bring forth an instrument for his work. What is this instrument for his work? Thermonuclear missiles. That's what it is, right? And I have created the waster to destroy this isn't just talking about uh, a, 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 a smith creating 
a sword, a real sword. A, a, a mega, a mega sword. <laughs> hey, a Zelda dagger. <laughs> <laughs> This ain't talking about, you know, a, a, a Cole Smith creating a, a Zelda dagger and just killing people. This is a waster. This is a bigger instrument to destroy, right? This is a real weapon. This is talking about what we call ICBM missiles in which Brazil, Russia, India, and China have. So these carpenters, these big four, they would have, they would be nu nuclear states. All right, they will have nuclear capabilities because Isaiah 54 and 16 is dealing with the ICBM missile work, according and um, <clears throat> paralleling with all the other scriptures that we find dealing with the thermonuclear destruction and the missiles. Matter of fact, real quick, since we're here, right? Let's go. We're going to show you that these devils, they know exactly what's going on. They know missiles is in the Bible, right? So we see, um, let's go to Joel chapter three. And it says, uh, where is that? Where is that about the missile defense system? It's two. Okay, here we go. Here we go, right? Neither. So when you read Joel chapter two, this is dealing with America's missile defense system right this is dealing with the missiles okay and it starts at verse 4 Joel 2 and 4 the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen so shall they run like the noise of chariots on top of mountains shall they leap they gonna go from government to government right they ain't talking about actual mountains like the noise of a flame a fire that devoured the stubble this ain't talking about no actual horses this is talking about the missiles, right? As a strong people set in battle array, before their face, the people shall be much pained. All their faces, all faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Horses gonna climb the walls? No. Scripture's talking about the missile. When you read another translation, it says that they're gonna break through the uh, defense systems. This is what it's talking about. And they shall march everyone in his ways and they shall not break their ranks because these missiles aren't going to break their ranks right watch this neither shall one thrust another they're not going to hit another they shall walk everyone in his path and when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded meaning these this missile defense system is going to be inadequate when the brick shoots and destroys this place this hellhole this harlot known as america and babylon the great right now let's take a look at this the word shalak shalak in the hebrew let's see what it says look at this it's strong's h 7973 look at this the first definition weapon missile sprout missile weapon what is that I, missile. <laughs> missile. <laughs> we're gonna say it twice like the the strong's the strong concordance guy missile missile Okay, so the translators of the Hebrew scripts dealing with the uh, Strong's definition in the, the Thayer's lexicon, also to the uh, Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, right? They understand what's going on here. These are not actual swords that you take in your hand and wield. These are talking about mass instruments of destruction. All right, so let's uh let's go back to zachariah one and then i'll get a couple more precepts and hand the floor back over okay so back in zachariah chapter one we was dealing with the carpenters right so okay so Zechariah 1 and 20, it says, and the Lord showed me four carpenters. These are the big four, better known as the brick. What are they going to do to these four horns? The, the, the key players of NATO, they're going to have to battle the key players of brick. You can go, you can look up all these articles. Brick versus NATO. Who will win? NATO versus brick. Who will win? Right? So we see verse 21, it says, then said I, what come these to do? What are these carpenters coming to do? What are these smiths coming to do? 
what is the brick coming to do <laughs> okay global governance is what they're coming to do they're gonna rule for how long alizar <laughs> <laughs> like a split second like a okay split second. <laughs> <laughs> okay and it says and he spake saying these are the horns which have scattered judah now we see up top it mentions the southern kingdom and northern kingdom but right here it says that the horns only scattered judah because it's putting more of an emphasis on judah being scattered why because judah got scattered the most you the northern kingdom they were getting scattered back to spain and portugal portuguese some some small remnants to other places but there was a mass massive diaspora with the um southern kingdom yeah with the southern kingdom okay so when you look up the the numbers which i believe the books are cooked but even according to the numbers they say seven million of our northern kingdom brothers were enslaved and it says 12 million of the Southern Kingdom brothers were enslaved, right? So we see they weren't far behind us, but it's putting more emphasis on Judah because Judah got scattered more and got um, uh, enslaved more, according according to their numbers, right? So that no man did lift up his head, but these are come to fray them. Who's come to fray them? The carpenters are coming to fray. This word fray in Hebrew, it means to rout. Right, like when you see a football game and it's 70 to zero, that's called a route. That's what it's gonna be because there's no match. There's no match. Um, uh, there's no match to, to the brick. America's military might missile power. It's just no match for Russia alone, right? To tremble, to quake, to move about, be afraid, be startled, be terrified, drive in terror, right? So the carpenters are coming to fray them, coming to rout them. And it says to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, right? Which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Because it's saying the land of Judah to scatter it because we're a people, we are the earth, right? The scriptures say that, um, what was that? What was that scripture? The scripture that, the seed falls on good soil. Even in the Apocrypha, it says, those that are found within my borders, we are the most high's borders. We are the most high's land, right? So that's why I said scattered Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel. Con. Jerusalem is a place, it's a city. How do you scatter a city? You scatter the uh, people who it belongs to. Con, con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you uh you cut Nasi with that. He didn't just pick up, pick up the whole <laughs> geographical location of Jerusalem cut and then take pe cut it up to a puzzle piece and scatter it around the earth. Now Jerusalem is no more. Like a jigsaw puzzle. Now. <laughs> That's why the scriptures say, uh, you know, we're a people before a place, right? So uh that's all I had on that. Oh, so when you look up the the key players of NATO, because one may say, Well, the big four of NATO isn't isn't the big four uh that Daniel seven had said, or the European slave competition. Well, this is why you have something called the Texic, the Brexit, the Gexit. Some of these European countries are going to, um, what's it called? Succeed, su su what's it called? Succeed. Uh -huh. Yeah, succeed from that organ that, uh, that union, right? Yeah, so yeah as well as militarily, militarily, the, those um those four horns match up militarily right the the main four militaries of nato are uh britain uh united states of course um spain and france those are the main military powers so when it comes to war those four armies are going to be the main ones fighting you know um the same way it's going to be on a reverse kind so you see here you see Germany been threatening to leave the EU and NATO. We see Turkey, because right now, if you look up the biggest military forces in, in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is NATO, you'll see Turkey's at number four. But you see something's gonna happen through the spirit and through the prophecy, which I'm gonna show you, that these countries are gonna uh, secede. And that's gonna bring what? 
that's going to bring the four key players that the Daniel and Zachariah was prophesying about. Those are going to be the key players because some of these are going to succeed, right? As you see, Turkey right here warning for the Texit, which is uh, 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 Turkey's exit from NATO, right? So the Revelation 17, right? Let's get this and then I'll conclude. Revelation 17, uh, it says, in the tent, 17 verse 16, in the 10 horns, this is NATO and EU on top of the, the harlot, which is America, which thou sawest upon the beasts, America, these shall hate the whore. So they're gonna start wanting to succeed as we see here. And as we've seen with Greece and Germany and even the Brexit that everybody was panicking, panicking about. It says, um, they're gonna hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So we see that even within NATO and EU, they're gonna have a struggle a lot of these countries, they're going to get when that brick is preparing to really decimate and obliterate the NATO and EU and mainly America, and they're going to jump on their side. Then they're going to start fighting against each other and then fighting against Yahweh Shai and the angels and the elect and be destroyed. Then we have the kingdom of heaven, and that concludes it. And if you got anything else, you are aside. Go ahead, Akia. Kinda, I just want to go into something and related to this. It's directly related because they are the four horns that are going to fray. Or they are the four carpenters, rather, that are going to fray the four horns. This is important because we know the four horns are the people who are predominantly responsible with enslaving us. The chief of all those being America, which is Babylon. Now, I'm going to go into something because they're going to fray. How are they going to fray? Through the thermonuclear missile technology that they've been developing that the brother referenced in Jeremiah 54 and 16 about the Smiths and creating the waster to destroy, etc. And even them being carpenters, right? So now let's get Isaiah 34. Okay. Right, we're gonna go to Isaiah 34 and we're gonna start at one because this is going to outline a very specific prophetic destruction that God said would occur to Edom, right? So I want y'all to keep we're gonna we're gonna download all this and keep this in mind because it's in direct relation to Russia's just dest destroying something, right? And then we're gonna show you the parallel prophecy. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, so go ahead, officer. Cons, Isaiah chapter thirty-four, verse one: Come near, ye nations, to mm -hmm. hear, and hearken, ye people. That's right. So the, the prophet is saying through the spirit of the Most High, nations, come listen to this prophecy. Read, Con, let the earth hear, <coughs> sorry, let the earth hear, and all that is therein. See that, and this is important because how is this happening? How is how how is the Most High letting the earth hear this prophecy by putting men on these street corners? We're on the street corners with missile signs. We're on the street corners telling people that America will be destroyed with thermonuclear fire. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's how the nations are coming to hear this. Read. Con. It says, um, the world and all things that come forth of it. Mm -hmm. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations. Uh -huh. God is mad at everyone. Right, Read. Con. And he in his fury upon all their armies. Uh -huh. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Read on. Their slain also shall be cast out, uh -huh. and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Read on. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Uh -huh. Shall be melted with their blood. Talking about the nations, right? The mountains, the governments, the, the kingdoms, the empires. Read on. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Uh huh. And what? All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. How is that host of heaven going to be dissolved? That's with that missile con that we read about there in Isaiah 40. Uh, it was Jeremiah, so like it, rather, 40, uh, 54 and 16, right? Read. Con. It says, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Uh-huh, that's that mushroom cloud. Read on. And all their hosts shall fall down. Uh-huh, meaning all their armies. Right, read. As the leaf falls off from the vine. Uh-huh. And as a falling fig from the fig tree. Read on. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. My what? My sword. My sword shall be bathed in heaven. What is his sword? That missile technology that we read about again in Jeremiah 54 and 16 that the carpenters will have in Zechariah 1, who are Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Right, read on. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. On who? On Idumia. On Idumia. On Idumia, on the land of the white men. Now, one might say, well, Idumia, that's talking about the actual land of Edom. Just hold that. Let's put a pin in that. We're going to come right back to that. Don't worry. I want to keep reading this prophecy. It said, that sword shall come down on the land of Edom. Read on. And upon the people of my curse. Uh -huh. Upon who? The people of my curse. Those white people are cursed, I say, if the most high God. That's right. 
It's going to come down on the people of the curse of Yahweh. Read on. To judgment. Uh, to what? To judgment. God is going to judge the white man through this sword, which is a missile. Read. Con. The sword of Yahweh is filled with blood. Uh huh. It is made fat with fatness. That's right. And with the blood of lambs and goats. Uh huh. So that's what he's looking at. That's what he's calling these people sacrificial animals because that's what their capital is mount seer mount shayar in the hebrew when you look at it it's a sacrificial animal or a devil see what i'm saying this is very deep to understand this prophecy man right so read con it says with the fat of the kings of rams uh -huh. for yahweh have the sacrifice in basra in basra so we're looking at this and the average person will look at this and take a look at the geographical locale of basra of idumia and say what has to happen here again keep that in mind read con it says, um, Yahweh, the great sacrifice in Basra mm -hmm. and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. That's right. Go ahead. And the unicorns shall come down with them, uh -huh. and the bullocks with the bulls. Uh -huh. And their land shall be soaked with blood. It shall be what? Soaked with blood. Soaked with blood. Wherever this place is, it's going to be soaked with blood, read. And their dust made fat with fatness. Uh -huh. For it is the day of Yahweh's vengeance. That's right. God is going to have his vengeance. On the so-called white man, especially this Western white man, for what they've done to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Again, that all ties back in to Zechariah 1 that we were just going into. It says, these four horns have scattered Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel. Right? So that's the vengeance. That's why the Most High is coming down on them for scattering and murdering and raping and robbing Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel. Right, so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read in the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Uh huh. And for what Con says, uh, for the controversy of Zion. So I'm not just making it up, it says it for the controversy of Zion. For what you have done to the Israelites, I'm going to do this to you, Edom. Read and the streams there, thereof shall be turned into pitch. Uh huh. Shall be turned into pitch. That's tar. Con. That's that's that is something that only a thermonuclear missile can do. That's right. That is thermonuclear fallout. That would turn a body of living running water into tar. There's nothing else that can do that. Read. And the dust thereof into brimstone. Uh huh. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. You see that burning pitch? It's going to be lava pits and tar pits all over this country, right? Or all over Edom now, because somebody may argue. No, talking about Edom. I ain't talking about America. Don't worry about it. We're going to get it in a second. Read. Con, it says, it shall not be quenched night nor day. Uh -huh. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Y'all hear that? That's what he's saying about Edom. Now, quick quick uh, spoiler alert for the chat. I'm not going to spoil it, but somebody in the chat may spoil it. Who else is said to be destroyed like that? What other place did God say he was going to destroy like that? All right. Keep going. Con, it says, from generation to generation, uh -huh. it shall lie waste. Remember, this is all Edom. Basra it's talking about, right? Read. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Uh huh. But the uh, cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. Uh huh. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. Read on. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion uh -huh. and the stones of emptiness. That's right. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, uh -huh. but none shall be there. They're gonna call them to the whose kingdom? Our kingdom. There's not gonna be. There's not gonna be a Donald Trump. Because he's gonna be burnt up. That's right. In that judgment, there's not gonna be a, any of these damn nobles of America. They will be burnt up in that judgment, right? So that's in 14? No, I'm just on 12. Keep going. And all her princes shall be nothing. Uh-huh, nothing, right? All the rulers, all the government officials, all the people who are looked at and regarded highly in the society will be as nothing of these Edomites. Read on. Right, verse 13. And thorns and thorns shall come up in her palaces. Uh-huh. Nettles and brimbles in the fortresses thereof. Read on. And it shall be an habitation of dragons uh -huh. and a court for owls. Uh, dragons now. Uh, uh, from generation to generation, it's burning. No one's going to be there. Dragons and owls. Read on. Con, verse 14. The wild beasts of the desert. Desert wild beasts. Y'all read your Bibles. It says the same thing about another place. Right. Read. The wild beasts of the desert shall uh -huh. also meet with the wild beasts of the islands. Read on. And the satyr shall cry to his fellow. Uh-huh. The screech owl also shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. You see that? That's 14. Uh -huh. So we heard that, right? Give me over that one, 18 yeah. and 19. So. All that said, it was going to happen in Edom, right? There's a problem with that. And I'm going to show you the problem with that, to think that it's going to happen in the actual place that we know is Edom, right? The actual place of Basra. It's going to prove that it's not talking about the actual location, but a place rather that is called after its name currently, right? In a spiritual way. We're going to prove it. Read. Uh, this is Obadiah verse 19. Uh -huh. They of the south. They of who? The south. The south I need you to start at 18. Read. Verse 18. 
It says, uh, Obadiah 118, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, uh -huh. and the house of Joseph a flame. So the northern and southern kingdom is going to come together and be as a fire and a flame. Read. And the house of Esau for stubble. And Esau, the so-called white man, will be for stubble, meaning the northern and southern kingdom are going to come together and burn through the so-called white man. Read. Come. And they shall kindle in them uh -huh. and devour them. And can kindle in and devour. Read. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. They, they shall cease from existence. That's what the Bible says. They're not going to exist anymore, right? Read for Yahweh has spoken. Uh huh. And they of the south, they of the south. Who was they of the south? The tribe of Judah. That's who possesses the southern portion of the nation of Israel, right? A large portion. It says they of the south read shall possess the mount uh -huh. of Esau. See that? And Edom is just south of Judah, so their land is going to the tribe of Judah's land allotment in Israel is going to be expanded, and it's going to include Esau. Okay. The Mount of Esau. So what does that prove? That this place that's going to be utterly wasted, as we just said in Isaiah 34, can't be the land of Esau because that's going to be turned into the land of Israel, the land of Judah. So that can't be the place. So what is the place? The place is Babylon. Drive what you got, Isaiah, 30, Isaiah 13, 19 to 22. Okay. The, the place it's talking about is Babylon. That's what it's dealing with. All right? Because it says the exact same thing about Babylon, right? Read Isaiah 13 and 20, 13, 19 to 22. 19, kind of. It says Isaiah 13 and 19, and Babylon, uh -huh. the glory of kingdoms, uh -huh. the beauty of the Chaldees excellency, read, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Go ahead, and it, it shall never be inhabited, uh -huh. neither shall it dwell from generation, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Ain't that what it just said about Edom? Read, kind of. it says, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, uh -huh. neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Go ahead. That's 20. I need the 22. Uh -huh. But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. Didn't it just say that about Edom? Read. Come. It says, and their houses shall be full of doleful <laughs> creatures, and owls shall dwell there. Didn't it just say that about Edom? Owls, read. And satyrs. Oh, is it, didn't it say the satyr, right? Read. Come. Shall dance there. Uh huh. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their <laughs> desolation. All the same exact thing by the same prophet. Uh -huh. Read. And their desolate houses. And dragons in the pleasant palaces, uh -huh. and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. You see that? So it's saying the same thing about Babylon that it's saying about Edom, and the reason is because the Edomites are the rulers of Mystery Babylon. So why it's calling this land of America Adumia and Basra is because there are more Edomites here in this country than in any country in the world. This is New Edom. This is New Basra. So it's being allegorically referred to as Edom, or then as Babylon.